Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In the first part of our video on the Porsche Taycan aerodynamics, we equipped the car with tufts to see what the local airflow on the surface of the car is when we take it out for a spin on the real road. We then did a drive-by of the car to see locally how they move and how we can compare this to simulation data. And in terms of simulation, we used a high-precision 3D scan that we got from A2 Mach 1 and ran it through our simulation platform at Airshaper to analyze the airflow um, to know actually before we even place the tufts where we should place them and where we can expect difficult flow. So the first thing you can see in this video as we approach the car from the rear is that the tufts at the rear of the car, even though it's a bit difficult to see, um, they all stay nicely attached and stay in a nicely parallel flow position. Um, and this is reflected in the simulation as well. Even though you see slightly lower surface friction because of the expansion of the air locally, um, you see nicely parallel streamlines on the surface of the car, indicating that the flow is still nicely attached in that area. The second thing we see as we approach the rear side of the car is that we see quite a lot of turbulence on the surface on the bumper here uh, behind the rear wheels. And again, if we move to the simulation, we can first analyze the pressure clouds to see that the air, which is being made turbulent by the wheels, as these act kind of like a mixer, um, this wake um, and this drag zone, turbulent drag zone uh, of the wheel extends kind of from the center of the wheel arch to the rear part of the car here, where it connects to the, to the edge of the rear spoiler. And this is exactly what we see in the simulation as well. Um, if you look at the surface friction, you can see that the tufts which are located above the center of the wheel arch, uh, they are still in a attached flow um, area. And it's only the tufts that are in this wake that will start to move. So if you go back to the video that we made, you can see that these ones, they're all wiggling, but the ones that are just above the wheel arch, they're fairly stable all the way until this point. And then you can see that this one is wiggling, this one is wiggling, and this one is wiggling, which is this, um, di this divide line that we also see in the simulation here, which is this line. So anything below this line is in the blue zone, which is separated airflow, so it's wiggling, and anything that's above is actually in a stable position. Now the next thing we want to show and analyze is the flow around the A-pillar, which is quite an important structure um, in the flow pattern around a car. Um, and actually what we see, if, if we pause the video here for a second, um, is that there's a swirl when the air hits the front windshield and then makes its way to the side window. There's a swirl of the air which curves around this A-pillar. And this swirl behaves like a vortex which actually curls all the way upward um, to the car. And there's also a, a larger scale uh, swirl that takes the flow upward. Um, and at the bottom of the flow, you can see that it straightens out a bit as it moves in between the, uh, the mirror um, and the side window. And this is exactly what we see in the video. So over here, you can see the tufts are really inclined upward or oriented upward. And then also these ones, they feature on average an upward uh, pattern here as well. And these lower ones, they're fairly horizontal uh, in this position. Another thing um, we wanted to analyze is again, just like the rear wheel, uh, the size of the wake um, that is caused by the front wheel uh, to see how much um, it influences the local flow pattern. And what you can see here is that apart from the wake, which is caused by the headlamp, which extends all the way to this wheel arch, we'll cover that later on, um, you can see that this wake is also fairly large. It extends really upwards, um, only to be, to be pushed downward um, afterwards by the air that is coming on, to, on top of the front hood and then uh, going downwards underneath the mirror. So you have a, a laminar flow pattern here at the top, um, but the turbulent area um, all the way here, even starting right above the center of the wheel arch. So the tufts that we equipped, um, they're kind of uh, 10, 15 centimeters behind the center of the wheel arch, which means they're located over here. So we do ex expect movement there. Um, and as we play the video, we can indeed see that both of these tufts are already wiggling um, because it's um, because they're located in a turbulent airflow, which is this location actually. And then you can see that all the ones that are located in this lower area, which are these ones, they're all wiggling as well because they're all featuring um, the separated airflow coming off the wheel. And it's only the ones that are here 
just below the mirror, which are getting the, the more laminar uh, attached flow, uh, which is coming off the front hood and then curving uh, along the sides of the door. Um, so that's what you see reflected there. Uh, the bo bottom ones are wiggling and the top ones are fairly stable. Now, another interesting thing that we noticed in the simulation actually, is that um, there is a pocket, which is a very nice design feature. So these headlamps, they're set back a bit uh, into this body panel. Um, and you can see that the air will actually enter this cavity. At the bottom, it will actually enter the air curtain, which will feed air along the wheel here, which is one of the reasons why you see less drag and less turbulent airflow here um, compared to the top part of the wheel. But this top part is actually closed, or at least not being fed into the air curtain, and you can see that the air jumps out and locally needs to take a very sharp corner, and it's too sharp, which means you have a local bit of separation there. And we wanted to check if this was the case in reality, so we applied tufts both within this uh, zone, if we turn on the surface friction, we can see it clear, um, some tufts within this uh, separated airflow zone, and some right above. And if we then look at the video, indeed we can see that the bottom ones are wiggling, but the top ones are actually stable, uh, which indeed confirms that there is a local separation bubble, uh, which is then squashed against uh, the body panel again. But if you would ever like to improve drag even further, then this might be a very small area where it can actually make a difference. Another thing we want to show you, and it was quite difficult to do this on the car on the road, uh, but in simulation it's quite uh, easy to do this, is to analyze the bottom of the car. Um, the first thing that we see as the air jumps underneath the car is that there's no separation uh, at the front splitter uh, whatsoever. Um, in most cars, or in many cars or sports cars, you'll see a perfectly flat splitter, and then as the air dives underneath, you have a local separation bubble before it reattaches to the underfloor. In case of the Porsche Taycan, um, that's not present, which is really good. You have nice attached flow and a nice acceleration and entry of the air underneath the car. If you then turn on the surface friction, we can see that the airflow stays nicely attached throughout the entire center part of the car as it enters between the front wheels. Obviously on the sides you have the wheels blocking the flow, but in the center part you have nicely attached flow and the only disturbance that you see are these little small blue um, holes. And if you go back to our first video, you'll notice when we walk underneath the car that the bolts that actually hold this panel and bolt it or screw it um, to the uh, bottom of the car have been integrated into the underfloor so they don't stick out and don't cause too much disturbance. The only effect you'll see is that each time you pass a bolt you have a local pocket uh, of air, of more or less standstill air, um, but the main disturbance is, is not as high. Um, and then you see that the flow enters um, the rear portion of the car and connects to the rear diffuser which is nice to speed up the air and to connect to the wake behind the car. And it's really nice to see that Porsche even gave the suspension an aerodynamic cover, which probably when you're at the right ride height, um, blends in uh, and becomes flush with the rest of the underfloor to continue that effect um, to accelerate the flow underneath the car. We do see that the flow separates as it needs to cross the gap between the suspension cover and the rear part of the diffuser, but probably somewhere close outside of the surface, it still helps to feed air into the wake behind the car and reduce the drag. So that was it for our second and final video on the Porsche Taycan Aerodynamics. We really hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.